Hey guys, it's Tori and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. This was a really good reading month, which was surprising because I started school, but I guess early on in the month I was really motivated to read and I had time as school was just starting and so I ended up reading quite a bit. However, the last couple weeks I was only reading one. I kind of had a little bit of a reading slump going on. Like the majority of these books I read towards the beginning of the month. So anyway, let's just get into them. First, let's start with the audiobooks I listened to. I did complete, well, technically I'm still working on the seventh Harry Potter, but I've been just listening to Harry Potter primarily to get me back into school and relieve some stress that way in between classes. Um, so not much to talk about there. However, I did also listen to The Odyssey by Homer, by Homer, um, and I ended up giving this three out of five stars. It was decent. It's one of those stories where it's nice to be able to read the original story, but it's not necessarily the most interesting story. Um, there's a lot of really, really cool characters that can be explored. Last year I read the book Circe by Madeline Miller, which I really, really enjoyed. It was cool to compare that to the original source material as I was listening to the audiobook. For the Odyssey, also the audiobook I listened to was by Ian McKellen, so it was kind of fun hearing his voice narrate. I feel like I couldn't give it less than a three because obviously it's amazing that we have it and it's a huge, huge part of literature and culture and so um, I feel like it would just be silly of me to give it less because it definitely has some really important aspects to it that have flooded um, even modern culture. So anyway, I don't, that was kind of a ramble but yes listen to that. That was actually for a class. I have read other things for my classes as well, of course, this month, but this was like the longest, like most full length piece that we, I read, so I'm only really counting this for this video and on Goodreads. So anyway, next moving on to physical books, I ended up reading Below Stairs by Margaret Powell. This is a memoir written by Margaret Powell, obviously, who was a kitchen maid in the 1920s. This was written during the 60s, actually so several years later but she just tells some experiences she had this is the inspiration for shows like Downton Abbey and Upstairs Downstairs and it was really really cool comparing it to Downton Abbey I read this sorry about the light reflecting off of it but I read this specifically for in preparation for down to the Downton Abbey movie which came out which I did really enjoy and it was just really fun. I didn't love Margaret. I found sh her a little abrasive, um, but I am appreciated at the end she kind of explains her abrasiveness, describing it as kind of a psychological thing that she actually has discussed with her therapist of like an inferiority complex that caused her, some people it causes them to like turn inward and become very passive and it made her on the other hand very aggressive and you see that throughout and it kind of bothered me throughout but understanding that deeper meaning sorry if you can hear my roommates I don't know what I think they're playing Mario Kart but anyway yeah so I ended up giving this a three out of five stars as well it was good it was fun definitely not like the best book I've ever read but it was enjoyable and really well written so really enjoyed that. Next I read Trinity Flynn and the Five Points Gang by Christopher J.H. Jones. Um, I did do a full length spoiler free review on this a few weeks ago so I will link that video down below and I won't go into much depth here. Basically this follows a woman named Trinity Flynn who in 1920s New York who discovers a desire to be trained as a spy and pilot and it's meant to be a series it just barely came out very recently um, and it was just so much fun that's all I'll really say here it was a blast it was like everything I wanted out of a synopsis like that and it was just entertaining it was like Nancy Drew meets Agent Carter meets like Amelia Earhart <laughs> and like I said it was just fun also this is hard to get as it was um, published by a local very very like just starting publishing company so in that spoiler free review I link where you can buy it if you would be interested in getting it but it was really really good and highly recommend if you're interested and are able 
to get your hands on it. And the next book I read was definitely the high point of the month and that was The 13th Tale by Diane Sutterfield. This is a story that follows a woman who helps to run this used bookstore with her dad and they also are the type of people that seek out rare books and sell them to collectors for very very large amounts of money so their most of their income comes from that and there is this woman named Vita Winter who is super famous she's like the she's compared with Dickens and she's written many 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 novels like 40 or something she is notorious for always telling a fabulous new story every time she's interviewed she's never really told the truth about her life and so every time someone interviews her they just expect her to make up a new story about her past um, however she's getting old and she decides that she wants to tell the truth of her life and she ends up calling up this main character her name is Margaret Margaret Lee <laughs> and this basically is the story of her life as well as Margaret's own struggles in her own life as well and how she deals with those and it was so so good there's a mystery involved in this basically Vita tells Margaret from the get-go that the story ends with a fire and so you're basically trying to figure out like what happened in this fire why was it caused what exactly is going to lead up to that traumatic event of the burning down of her childhood home it's so good it was like a mix it was like Jane Eyre meets Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier meets like a Shirley Jackson novel like it was so gothic and creepy but like not too creepy it was like perfect but if you don't like Jane Eyre don't let that put you off because it's just more the tone and you know a mysterious fire kind of it has that Jane Eyre aspect to it but it's not like Jane Eyre <laughs> just to say that the mystery like the big reveal for the mystery at least for me it was set up so well where I could see there were so many hints throughout that you could figure out yourself but for me I ended up figuring out right before the main character did which is exactly how it should be in mystery novels I seriously this is definitely a new favorite of the year and I really want to reread it just so I can see those hints throughout because I can think back and recognize some of the hints towards the end to the ending really easily once you know like they're very clear but when you're reading it they're not so clear like they just add to the mystery of like okay but what does that mean what is that and oh my gosh I can't rave about this enough please give it a shot if you like psychological thrillers domestic thrillers and if you like books about loving to read like this is for you and it's just so so good I loved it and the last book I read this month which took me forever to read even though it shouldn't have because it's not very long is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen which I gave a 4 3.75 out of 5 stars oh also <laughs> the 13th tale I gave 5 out of 5 stars if that wasn't obvious anyway back to Northanger Abbey let's start with the synopsis this follows a girl named Catherine Moreland who loves gothic novels specifically Udolpho she's been reading on the recommendation of a friend um, I forgot what the author's name for Udolpho is but it's a real book so if you want to read that before reading this you could I kind of wish I had because I think it would have added to some of the enjoyment um, of it but that being said it gets to her head a little bit and there's some mysterious things going on with her friend new friend and their family that she construes in the most dramatic gothic ways she can let's start with things I liked I really just love Jane Austen's wit and it's actually been like three and a half years since I read a Jane Austen so I've forgotten how funny she can be and so I was laughing out loud all through this literally the first paragraph as you can see I highlighted and marked um because it like literally starts off basically saying like no one would expect Catherine to be a heroine because her father is a pretty decently paid clergyman and he's not abusive and then her mother didn't die in childbirth with her she's still alive and she went on to have many more children like just kind of those common tropes it's just poking fun at that and it was so funny um, I also did appreciate Catherine as a character especially just her fangirl moments where she like 
like you know those moments where you like have this fandom that you really really love like, someone will like make a comment about it and then you like will make a small comment just to kind of test the waters like okay how much can I show them that I'm in love with this fandom and like based on their reactions you go deeper into it or you like let it drop <laughs> but she totally has these moments people will say something about a gothic novel and she'll be like oh well and like say a little thing and testing the waters before she like lets out her full passion and it was just so funny but that being said I honestly just expected more out of this. It was one of those books where I liked it, but I ended up being disappointed by that, by it, if that makes sense. I expected more than what I got. A huge thing in it that I have heard in every synopsis that I've ever heard um, on booktube with booktubers who try really hard not to spoil anything and every, just every synopsis I've heard about this book discusses that a lot of her ideas about a family, um, the family of her friend, start because she visits their house and finds out about some things and that doesn't even happen till the second part. Like the f whole first part is her just meeting them and getting to know them. It was fine but because I was expecting something different it was really boring to me and yeah so it was kind of, that was part of what made it a struggle to get through I think was that I felt like nothing was really happening. I almost wish this was longer and it had more intense gothic moments than it did. It also may have been a mood thing, like maybe I just was in the mood for something more dramatic than what this is. But anyway, it was good. Um, I'll probably reread it in the future and maybe next time I reread it I'll have a better idea of what to expect <laughs> and enjoy it a little bit more. But unfortunately, like it's still a 3.75. Like I still really enjoyed it. It just was a little bit disappointing. Anyway, that is it for my wrap up. Let me know down below some books you read in September, especially if you ended up really loving them as I would love to know. Um, and also let me know down below if you are planning to join into Victober, which is going on this month, as I would love to know that as well. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.